Hello and welcome to the amazing world of math. Today we are going to be talking about simplifying radicals and by the end of this these videos you'll be able to simplify radicals uh, with variables raised to powers and whole numbers. So you'll be able to simplify pretty much anything underneath a radical sign. So talking about a few things with these videos, uh, it's very important that you're taking thorough notes because otherwise if you're just sitting here watching you may retain some of the information you may not. So whenever I have uh, this beautiful red icon here, you'll see it says write it down. That means anything pretty much underneath there, I would like you to write down. And you don't have to write down the whole thing, but at least the shorthand. Um, also, make sure whenever you're looking at any of the problems, if I say that I want you to pause and try the problems, you need to make sure for certain that you have those problems in your notes. Um, so let's talk about a few things. We're going to be solving, we're going to be simplifying radicals. So a radical expression is uh, something that has the radical sign. And really radical sign, what I'm talking about, is anything like this. Now, a lot of times you're going to see that as, or it'll be talked about as a square root sign. But really we're going to call that a uh, radical here. Uh, so examples of radicals are 2 uh, radical 3 or the square root of the quantity x plus 3. Those are all expressions that contain radicals. So it can simplify if the following things are true, and make sure you have that as well. The radicant has no perfect square other than 1. So the radicant uh, is anything underneath the radical. So that is the radi radicant. Radicant. Look at that. Beautiful. Um, anything underneath the radical symbol is the radicant. The radicant contains no fractions. So no fractions allowed. And uh, so that also means no decimals. Um, and no radicals appear in the denominator of the fraction. So you'll see here's a beautiful list of the simplified and the non-simplified, right? So make sure that you have those in there as well. Um, in terms of the algebraic expressions, the things that we need to know is that as long as a is greater than or equal to 0 and b is greater than or equal to 0, the square root of the quantity a times b is going to be equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. Um, and this works because, say, for example, we have uh, radical 48. That's equal to the square root of 16 times the square root of 3, which is also equal to 4 radical 3. And if you wanted to try to, if you put both of those into the calculator, if you put the square root of 48 or 4 times the uh, square root of 3, you would get the same answer. So this is called the multiplication property of square roots. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all it's called. Um, so let's talk about a few things. Perfect squares. Perfect squares are something that we need to have memorized. And in fact, I will make this decree right now, uh, at least for Mr. Herb's class and potentially in other classes. Uh, you need to have at least these perfect squares memorized. And that means if I were to take the square root of each of these numbers, I'm going to get that integer value out. Uh, so here the square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2, square root of 3 is 9, and you pretty much get the picture. You are algebra students, and we expect you to at least be able to have these uh, concepts mastered. You need to at least have up to 15 squared mastered, so that way when you see it in a problem, you can instantly say, oh hey, uh, the square root of 225 is 15, and then it makes your life a whole lot easier. So let's try some problems. So what's the simplified form of 160? Well, I know that I can break down 160 to 16, the square root of 16 times the square root of 10. And the reason I do that is because the square root of 16, well, we know 16 is a perfect square, and the square root of that would just be 4. And then I can kind of think about, can I break down 10 any further? Well, the only thing I can really break 10 down to would be the square root of 2 times the square root of 5. And neither of those are perfect squares. So I'm going to leave that as just 4 square root of 10. Or you might also hear it as 4 radical 10. Okay, um, And that's 4 times the square root of 10. So what is the simplified form of 72? Well, let's think about what we have here. And say maybe you don't instantly know the quickest way here would be 30, the radical 36 times radical 2, which would be 6 square root of 2, or 6 root 2. Um, say I didn't think about that, though, and I just thought about it as the square root of 9 times the square root of 8. Well, I know that that would be 3 radical 8, 
But then I have to say, can I, you always want to check, can you simplify that down any further? So can I simplify radical 8 anymore? Well, yeah, that's just 4 radical 4 times radical 2. And we know the square root of 4 is 2, so that's really 3 times 2 times the square root of 2, which is just 6 square roots of 2. So you get the same answer, but if you have that number sense and say, hey, I know that 72 is 36 times 2, your life is going to be so much easier. You're going to be able to get through problems a lot quicker. So that's why I'm going to be uh, quizzing you on making sure you know your perfect squares up through 15. So sometimes you can simplify radical expressions that contain variables. A variable with an even exponent is a perfect square. For example, n cubed is equal to n squared times n. That little star there, anytime you see it, guys, that's going to mean n here. Um, so the square root of uh, n cubed is equal to the square root of n squared times n. And if I were to break that down even further, because of course I'm going to, that's the square root of n squared times the square root of n. And the square root of n squared is just n. Because really when you're taking a square root, you're raising something to the one-half power. And that's only with square roots. Uh, so if I were to take n squared and raise it to the one-half power, because I'm multiplying those powers together, that's really n to the two times a half, which would just be equal to n to the first, or n. And we can't simplify down uh, just radical n because that's n to the first and that's not a perfect square. So if I were to simplify that down, I'd have n radical n or n square roots of n. So let's try this problem. Um, if I were to try this problem, I have to think about, okay, what can I break down uh, 54 into? And if you know your nines instantly here, you're going to break 54 down to the square root of 9 times the square root of 6. And then I want to think about breaking down that uh, radical 7. Uh, so if I want to break down that radical 7, I'd break it down to the square root of 6, or a square root of n to the 6 times the square root of n to the 1st, or just the square root of n. And the reason I do that is because I can realize instantly, hey, uh, first of all, let's look at our perfect squares. The square root of n of uh, square root of 9 is just 3. The square root of n to the 6, we're just really taking half of that, so that would just be n to the third. And then all I'm left is the square root of 6 times the square root of n. But I don't really have to write it as those two different squares. Any kind of like scraps you have left over, you're just going to write them together underneath the radical symbol. So it would be 3n cubed square root of 6n. And that would be the simplified form. So let's try one more. This time we have a coefficient out front, but that's not really going to change anything. That just means we kind of bring it out front, and that's pretty much the end of it. Um, so if I were to try to do this one, 18, or sorry, 80, I know that uh, 80 can be broken down into 16 and 5. And if you don't get there instantly, that's okay, but that's something we really want you to work on. We know that's divisible by uh, 5, but we so you should be able to kind of figure out that it would be 16, but kind of have to have that number sense. Try a few numbers to figure out what's going to be your best. So I'm going to write that negative m out front, and then I'm going to have radical 80, and then radical m to the ninth. And you don't have to show these steps every time. This is just me walking you through step by step. Um, I can break down radical 80 into the square root of 16 times the square root of 5, and I could break down uh, the square root of m to the ninth to the square root of m to the eighth times the square root of m. So let's identify my perfect squares and simplify those. So really, negative m times, uh, well, let's do square root of 16, which is 4, times the square root of m to the 8th, which is just m to the 4th, and then I'm left with radical 5 times radical m. So now I know that that's m to the 1st, and that's m to the 4th, since I'm multiplying those powers, and they have like bases, or I'm multiplying those numbers and they have like bases, I can add up the powers. So it would be negative 4 m to the 5th times the square root of 5m. And that would be my final answer. So let's try another one. Or let's have you try some. So you try these two. Um, 
pause the video right here, work out the problem. When you're done, come and check it out. So you have the, you've tried these two and you realize that the first one was 9a uh, square roots of 2 and the other one was negative 63x to the fourth uh, square roots of 3x, which is a little bit more complicated. But let's go through it. If you got this, fast forward. If not, watch the explanation. So here I can break down 18 into 9 times 2. So I still have that 3 outside. And I can break this down into square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And I still have that square root of a squared left over. So our perfect squares here are going to be 9. So the square root of 9 is 3. So 3 times 3. And then the other perfect square I have is a squared. And the square root of a squared is just a. And then I'm left with radical 2. So 3 times 3 is 9. A radical 2. The next one that I have is I can break down that 27. So I'm going to rewrite that 21 on the outside. And then I can break 27 down to the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. I can break down this uh, x to the 9th to the square root of x to the 8th times the square root of x. And if you've already kind of figured out, oh, hey, I'm just going to take half of that and leave an x uh, inside, go ahead and do that. Uh, you don't have to break it down into square root of x to the 8th times the square root of x every time. That would get boring. Uh, so we take the square root of 9, which is 3, square root of x to the 8th, which is x to the 4th, and I'm left with the square root of 3x inside. So negative 21 times 3 is negative 63, x to the 4th, square roots of 3x. So let's move on to something a little bit more challenging. And these are the last two slides we're going to have. So here we're going to start off with uh, the simplified form of 2 square roots of 7t times 3 square roots of 14t to the second. And this is where it gets a lot of fun because you can use the multiplication property of square roots to write the square root of a times the square root of b as the square root of AB. It's kind of the opposite of what we dealt with before. And we've already done that to simplify these problems. Um, but let's walk it through. So here I'm going to multiply whatever the coefficients are outside first. So I'm going to multiply this 2 and the 3, and that'll give me 6. And then I can kind of break down everything inside. And really, I have 14, I know, is 7 times 2. So I have 7 to the first times 7 to the first. So inside, I'm going to have a 7 squared times 2. And then I have a t to the first times a t squared, which would just be t to the third. Now, that might have been a little bit confusing, so you might want to rewatch that. But I just essentially broke it down because now I have a perfect squared with that 7. So the square root of 7 squared is 7. And I have that 6 out front. I can't really do anything with the square root of 2, but I can break down uh, t cubed to the square root of t squared times the square root of t. So I know that my other perfect square here is t squared, and that's just going to be t. And then I have the square root of 2t to the inside. So 6 times 7 is 42t, square roots of 2t. And that's all I can simplify it down, because nothing inside... Um, nothing in the radicant is a perfect square. So one more. And then after this, we're actually going to have you, I'll have you start off the problems in the next video. Um, just so that way this one doesn't run over. So seven square roots of five X times three square roots of 20 X to the fifth. And if you can, uh, try to break down, try to break down anything inside already. So I can see right here that I can break that down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 5 times the square root of x to the fourth times the square root of x. And I still have that 3 outside. And the reason I do that is because if I can get all those and those are multiplication signs, if I can get anything inside uh, simplified first, that's going to save me a lot of time. Uh, so the square root of x to the fourth is x squared. The square root of 4 is 2. And then I still have that 7 times 2, or 7 times 3. So 7 times 3 times 2 times x squared. Underneath, I now have uh, square root of 5x times the square root of 5 times the square root of x. So really, 
that's going to be the square root of 5 squared x squared. Because 5 times 5 is 5 squared, or 25, and x times x is just x squared. Well, this becomes very easy for me to simplify because I now see that I have, well, the square root of 5 squared is just 5. The square root of x squared is x. So I multiply all of these things together, and that would give me 21 times 2, which would be 42. And then 42 times 5 would be 210. So I have 210 x cubed. All right, well, for the purposes of not trying to go over on time, uh, I'm going to stop the video here. But we're going to start off with problems. Um, you try some other problems in the next video. So thanks for watching, and take all the good notes. Bye-bye now.